Okay, guys. Matthew's gonna turn the turbo heater off. <laughs> Welcome back to the mill. Uh, you can see our uh, our puppies are having a good time this morning. That's uh, Leroy is the Springer Spaniel. Vader is my grandkids. Uh, Black Lab Golden Retriever. Golden Retriever mix. They play all day. Let me tell you, when Matthew and I go take lunch, Leroy will go to the house and he'll go, boom. <laughs> He's just exhausted. But anyway, Matthew's gonna turn the camera over here. For, let's talk today. Okay, what we're doing here today is I've had a tremendous amount of questions from people uh, about our vacuum system. We've briefly covered it in some of, the, some of the other videos, but today we're gonna go in more detail. I'm gonna show you every part and piece of it and tell you how I come about getting it and maybe how you can do the same thing. So hang on, we'll be right back. about our vacuum system let's start right here at the mill this part of this is the original turn down that comes with wood miser you know it's got the extension on it blows the sawdust out on the floor uh, Matthew and I fabricated this 90 degree bend uh, double bolts and it'll come off if we're doing mobile milling we'll just blow it out on the ground but we really don't do mobile milling much anymore uh, <clears throat> we got our suction hose here now I mounted this uh, pole because I wanted this up above my head. Uh, in the summertime, it stays way up there, but it's cold right now, so it, it sags. But uh, I'm gonna start by turning the blower on and just show you how much suction we have here, and then we're gonna go through the system. So it'd be a little loud, but we're gonna go through it. This is our switch on the wall. If you notice, there's a green light. So if I'm sawing, and that light ain't on, I know that, hey, come over here. See that they have plenty of suction to evacuate the sawdust. Uh, of course, we got our line here and it goes up the ceiling. I'm gonna move the mill down here out of our way. Okay, let's start here. Our suction line goes straight up into the ceiling, and there's actually an extra fan right there. Uh, I'll get on the lift a little bit we'll explain that more but it goes from that fan into the top of the manifold and this manifold comes through the wall and it's got extra ports and they're plugged off here here this one is actually open we needed a little extra airflow so it, it's got a vent on top and then we transitioned from hard pipe back to four inch flex tube Comes over here, it tees, comes down the wall. If we're running our planer close by, we can plug it in right here. Goes across the top of the wall, goes over here, it comes down to a gate, and we leave these. Sorry, I'm waiting on Matthew to catch up. We leave these gates open all the time because our system makes so much vacuum, you got to have some air or you'll really bog it down. So we got a, uh, three and a half inch line that stays open all the time. That gate over there stays cracked. And this one stays wide open. And all the sawdust off our, well, they ain't nothing to show you, it's all sucked up. All the sawdust off the chop saw gets picked up underneath here and out it goes. Okay, all the sawdust that hits here goes in this pipe tucked under here. So we built a box back in, uh, I don't know, a year and a half or so build a box under there to catch all the sawdust. 
Listen, we make sawdust every day. We hate cleaning sawdust. So anything you can do to get it sucked up out of here is great. So uh, we're going to go back over to this end, cover the rest of the inside here. So hang on. Okay, guys. If you start on that end, it's down to about four inches. And this uh, manifold, as it comes across, it increases size to this flange right here. And that's a 10 inch pipe. Comes all the way down and exits the building over here. But uh, we added one more cutout here to pick up our wood miser EG100. It comes right out the back. Uh, we got some modifications we're gonna do on this. Hopefully the next couple days we're gonna add another blower down here to you know the problems we've had with the dust extraction on it. We're gonna do the same thing we did up here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna boost it. So uh, let's go ahead and walk outside and then we'll come back in and go up the ceiling and show you the other fan. Okay, here our 10 inch pipe is exhausted just out into a pile. That'll be approved one day, but it's out of the building for today. Okay, over here, our 10 inch pipe is coming out of the building. Comes through two 90s, goes into our uh, exhaust fan. And then this is where your vacuum and pressure happens and it exits back out and out in the pile it goes. Now, let's talk about this system. Where did it come from? I've had several guys ask me, where, where'd you buy that? Where can I get one? Well, I bought it, but I had a cousin that was, uh, what was he doing? He was cleaning out a cotton mill. To, I think he been, ended up making apartments out of it or whatever, but he, he got hired to do the demo. And he got this fan and several other fans that I got in storage and a big old monster's fan. He got one the size of my Yukon. Yeah, he got the one, one the size of a car. But these were used in a cotton mill to control lint. They were never used for sawdust. They were just sucking lint off cotton machines. Uh, this one originally had a three-phase motor mounted right here. And I didn't want to do a phase converter on something we was going to turn on and off all day. And you can't get a 220 volt motor heavy enough to hold the impeller that's in this fan. It's about 45, 50 pound impeller. It's a big old chunk of metal. So what we ended up doing is we uh, bought a shaft, put two pillar blocks on it, and then uh, <clears throat> put our uh, belts to where it's, it's direct drive, but these pillar blocks are holding the weight of this impeller and not the motor. So the only, the only load on the motor is actually spinning these belts. And uh, you can tell by the grease, you need to grease these pillar blocks. We do it every, we do it every 50 hours when we service the mill. We come out here and we check on this, service it. Uh, been very reliable. Uh, a little, little engineering you gotta do to make it work. You know, I got a turnbuckle here that holds the motor, keeps tension on the motor, but still allows it a little bit of flexibility, so. Guys wanting to know where it come from, that's where it come from. It's a second chance blower system. I got it on a smoking hot deal. Uh, I probably got thousands of dollars worth of extra pipe stored in some uh, buckets of bins and the other buildings, elbows, fittings and stuff that hopefully we'll need one day for an upgrade project we're gonna do. So let's go inside and we'll get on the man basket, get Matthew up, get Beth in the ceiling and we'll explain that secondary blower, what it is and why it's there. Okay guys, if you've watched our videos, you, you've seen we made this uh, new box a while back. So this is actually its first use. We're gonna put Matthew to work, safety officer. <laughs>
Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed the ride. We're up here in the ceiling. Now, uh, it's not a whole lot of room for me, but as you can see, we got an extra floor up here in the ceiling. Uh, here's our inlet and our outlet. What that is, I'm sure you guys have got uh, wood shops, got one. It's a blower off a regular bag vacuum system, two horsepower out of a, out of a shop. Yeah, it's a Harbor Freight Special. When we put all this together and started running it, we were having issues with wet sawdust. Now, the dry log, it'd suck it up no problem. But with uh, real damp sawdust, it just wouldn't have enough lift. And uh, I didn't want to choke the vacuum system down to one outlet only because you could really hear it loading the motor. So this was our next best option. We just went and purchased a new one. Uh, that time it was like $250, they're $300 now, but mounted it up here and wired it into that switch. So when I throw that switch, it turns this fan on, but also got a, an extra switch I can turn this fan off independent of the other one. Like if we're running one of these outlets over here, we don't need this to run, I can just turn it off. But uh, we run it every day. It gives just that extra lift. You need to get all that wet sawdust up and out of here and bark, and you know, you get, small pieces of bark stuff. It, you can hear it when it goes through the impeller here and it goes through the impeller out there. Wham, bam, bam, bam. But uh, we're lifting almost, uh, well, the building's 13 foot tall. You know, we're, we got a vertical lift of probably about nine feet, depending on, you know, where the mill's at and its elevation. It takes a lot of vacuum to lift the amount of sawdust that comes off that mill straight up 10 feet, but that's going to do it uh, for this part. I'm going to have Matthew, you know, set me back down and we'll, we'll end this video. Thanks guys. Okay guys, one last thing. Uh, these can be used as breaker boxes or switches. And if you go looking for a 50 amp plus switch, you'll have a hard time finding one that's not outrageous. I think I got these for $35, $40 a piece. Uh, but we use it as a, as a switch. It's 220 volts coming in here and uh yeah come 220 going out. 220 going out here it goes outside and this is our other switch here we're pulling one leg off the 220 to run that fan and if we don't want it to run we can just turn it off but 99 percent of the time it stays on so anytime we get ready to saw you'll see matthew or i one walk over here that's what we're doing we're flipping on the exhaust fan now, the other one, you know, you can read, it's air compressor, it's for those. I got one air compressor out there with two tanks and it just worked out. I got a good deal on one guy said, here, take the other with you. So we got double reserve and we use a lot of air. When we go to clean this piece of equipment, the edger, or if we're cleaning off the mill, it takes a lot of volume of air. So that's gonna do it. Uh, got anything you wanna add, Matthew? Just how we added in those lights up there, it's dummy proof. You can tell if it's on or off. Yeah, the, we normally, you won't go, you won't leave with the blower running, but I couldn't tell you how many times I've been sitting in my living room and I see that little green light and I'm like, Matthew, we forgot to turn the compressor off, but it don't hurt if it runs a little bit overnight anyway, but <clears throat> that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, a little explanation of our vacuum system. If you guys, I know everybody wants one, but if you're trying to uh, figure out how to do one, uh, Facebook Marketplace, talk to your, your buddies, you know. I, f I find them on uh, Marketplace around here in Western North Carolina, you know, blowers. Look for three-phase stuff that you can convert. Yeah, that's, Matthew's got a good thing there. Three-phase stuff that you are willing to convert to 220 or run with a phase converter, either one. Uh, very few people out there are looking for three-phase stuff. It, it, once it comes out of the industrial application, it, it's hard for people to use it around their homes or whatever. But that's gonna do it for today. If you got any questions, comments, please leave them below. If you would, uh, we ask you to please like, subscribe, and share. Remember our videos come out Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at five o'clock Eastern time. Guys, we greatly appreciate it. We'll see you back at the mill. Thank you for watching. Here's a video selection and a playlist suggestion. Click here to subscribe for more great content. We'll see you at the mill.